So you've got about $400 or $450 to spend and you want to get the most bang for your buck in the smartphone market. So do you buy the latest mid-range Pixel 7a and get all that pixely camera goodness or jump on the Samsung Galaxy A54? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocket Lint and in this video I'll give you my thoughts on which of these two I think is best and why. Now design of any phone plays a crucial part in how we experience that device. At least it does for me. If it feels wrong in the hand, if it's too big, too cumbersome, the wrong shape, or feels like it would break too easily, it's enough to put me off using it. Of the two, it's the Samsung that has more of that big cumbersome feel to it only because it's the larger of the two phones. It's wide and tall predominantly because it has the bigger screen. Its back panel is also completely flat, where the Pixel's rear panel is rounded towards the edges for comfort. Those characteristics combined make it a more comfortable in-hand experience. It is a plastic back though, where Samsung has glass on both sides. Samsung did opt for plastic around the edges, and that gives the frame a slightly less rigid and sturdy feel compared to the chunky aluminium on the Pixel. Now that's not to say that Samsung got all the design elements wrong. The bezels around the display are less prominent, mostly due to the shaping around the corners of the screen, but also because of the larger display area. But what else makes a difference on design? Not masses. Both are water and dust resistant to the same IP67 level, so they'll survive being caught in the rain or dropped in water. Samsung has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the Pixel has Gorilla Glass 3, so the Samsung should be more durable from that point of view. The camera design is of course different too, and that mostly makes a difference if you lie them flat on their back. The single bar across the back of the Pixel means it doesn't wobble, where the protruding cameras on the Samsung make it prone to wobble quite a bit when it's laid down. But let's move on, and it's time to talk about displays and touch a little bit on software. Now the display is the one area I think the Samsung has a clear advantage over the Pixel. Not only is it bigger at 6.4 inches versus 6.1, but it's also much brighter and can reach faster refresh rates. Specifically we're talking 120Hz versus 90. It's a better panel for gaming and media I think and does a better job of cutting through reflections. So it makes it clearer and easier to see whether you're using it indoors or out in bright daylight. Samsung's default color balance or white balance is quite clean and cool compared to the warmer pixel tones, but that can be adjusted to quite granular levels in Samsung software. So you can get it looking just about any way you want. Both do let you switch between vibrant saturated modes and natural muted color schemes though. As for software, there's a clear difference. Pixel software is clean, bloat free, and just as Google intended. Samsung is very different, offering a lot of duplicate or bloat apps and lots of other Samsung tweaks to Android in the latest One UI skin. I personally prefer the Pixel's approach here, but you might feel different on that. Now what's not down to personal preference is how long you'll get updates and patches for. With the 7a, you'll get Android version updates until at least May 2026, so about three years. And you get security patches for about five years. Samsung offers four years of version updates and five years of patches on the Galaxy. However, with the Pixel being a Google phone, you will get those updates faster, virtually as soon as they're available to the public on Pixel phones. Samsung's versions tend to come out about two or three months later, even on the flagship models. So if timeliness is important to you, Pixel is the way to go. If you want updates for as long as possible though, Samsung might be a better choice. Okay, speed and general performance, and again, probably not a massive surprise, but for a couple of reasons, I think the Pixel feels faster and more responsive than the Samsung a lot of the time. I think predominantly that's down to the lighter software experience. I sometimes find the UI layers in the Samsung phone can stutter and lag a tiny bit when switching between different screens. Of course, part of that is also down to the slightly less powerful processor inside the Samsung. Pixel 7a is closer to that flagship level of power, but in truth, there's not a massive amount in this. When I loaded apps side by side, the Pixel did seem to load them a little bit quicker than the Samsung, but maybe a second at most, so again, not much in this. Both can get quite warm under load and don't seem to have that same efficiency as you'd get from a flagship Snapdragon processor. There's not really much in the way of a contest when considering battery life though. When you're comparing two phones of a similar level and one of them has 5,000 milliamp hours and the other one has 4,385, you know to expect one will outperform the other. And in this instance, it's the Samsung that comes out on top. Both will get most people through a full day, so neither underperforms worryingly, but if there's one I'd be less anxious to charge at night because I've got plenty of juice left, it's the Galaxy. With my light to moderate usage, roughly two to three hours of casual games, social media and web browsing, I'd happily end the day with about 40% left over after taking it off charge in the morning. It wasn't quite a two day phone, but it's not far off. Pixel wasn't really close to that. On the best days, I'd have about 30% left, but usually it was between 20 and 30. Neither phone has particularly fast charging though, so an overnight charge is probably best for most people. However, Pixel can charge wirelessly 
again, quite slowly, but it's a convenience for those who have charging stands or bases. So let's talk cameras for a bit, because actually, despite a similar makeup, it's one of those areas that will likely push you one way or the other when deciding which phone to go for. Like most phones, both phones have a primary camera and an ultrawide. Megapixel count is different on the two cameras, so it's 50 megapixels on Samsung, 64 on the Pixel, and ultrawides have a similar pixel count of 12 and 13 on the Samsung and Pixel respectively. But that's not what makes the difference. It's about the experience of using the camera app and how each camera's image processing engine interprets and processes the images once you press that shutter button. Now in most conditions I noticed a relatively consistent difference in the way Samsung processes shots versus how the Pixel does. And for the most part it is the Pixel that I prefer. A lot of the time outdoors in bright daylight if there was blue skies the Samsung would make those blues really saturated and a bit too unrealistic compared to the Pixel. That was the same with greens as well, but more importantly, I think, is how it deals with highlights and shadows. A lot of the time, the Samsung's camera over brightens lighter parts of images, so that in those brighter areas, you lose some of the color, and it gives it a bit of a flat, lifeless look in those bright patches. Pixel, by comparison, was much better at toning down those highlights and delivering colors with a more natural feel. It was still a bit saturated and contrast heavy, plus by default has generally a warmer golden tone, but it balances the bright and dark areas more consistently, so images don't tend to look overexposed. Looking at both ultra-wide results, particularly indoors or away from strong light, I noticed that neither was quite as good as the primary camera on either phone. Samsung's was really rough, contrasty, and dark to the point I'd only advise using it outside in strong light when you really need that wider shot. Now I also much preferred using the portrait setting in the Pixel which lets you quickly switch between one times and two times zoom settings and it has really good edge detection and a more natural background blur. There's something quite artificial looking about the blur in Samsung's portrait mode to the point that I would rather use a two times zoom and just let the natural depth take over. Now Samsung's tendency to brighten image did serve it well indoors away from strong light and that made night mode shots quicker to capture too. Pixel seems to take a bit longer to capture, but again, it's the Pixel's end results I think are stronger. Both deliver bright, colourful images in night mode, but Samsung's have an unusual artificial look to them. And if you zoom in on some of the details in the background, you'll see why. It's got a sense that some of that detail has been painted in by some AI robot painter with oil paint, and the photo loses some of that natural texture with that over-processing. Of course, Samsung has a third camera as well, which is a macro lens with low resolution. It doesn't deliver particularly good results. It's quite contrasty, a bit over-sharpened, and lacking in detail. Now, if I was to advise on which one of these to pick based purely on which one I preferred using, it'd be the Pixel. The camera, to my eyes, delivers the better results, with more natural textures and better balance of shadows and highlight. The software is also cleaner, and the overall speed and performance seems more responsive and quicker. It's also a more comfortable phone to hold and to use, and when major OS updates come out, you're going to get them quicker. That's not to say that Samsung has no redeeming qualities, though. The better battery life and the bigger, brighter, smoother display are definitely worth considering for those who value that over cameras. Plus, Samsung should keep you updated with major updates for longer, even if you have to wait a bit longer to get them. So, there you go. Unless you find the Galaxy A54 much cheaper, which you might well do, get the Pixel. But if it's a choice of saving $100 or more, the Galaxy will give you a great experience for the money. I've been Cam. Let me know what you think of these two phones in the comments down below, or you can get me on threads. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap that notification bell. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.